The James Webb Space Telescope has shifted its focus from the furthest reaches of the cosmos to our own solar system, obtaining a picture of a brilliant Neptune and its delicate dusty rings in detail that hasn't been seen in decades. The JWST has produced groundbreaking images despite being positioned 1 million miles from Earth. Seven of the 14 known moons of the faraway planet are visible in these fresh pictures, but the rings are the real stars. This video covers all you need to know about the first authentic images from Neptune as seen by the JWST. So, stay tuned! According to NASA, the last time scientists could see the planet in such detail was in 1989, when Voyager 2 became the first and only spacecraft to pass by the ice giant for a brief period. Heidi Hamill, the vice president of the Association of Universities for Research in Astronomy, confirmed this in a statement. It has been three decades since we last saw these faint, dusty rings, and this is the first time we've ever seen them in the infrared. I have been waiting for so long for these photographs of Neptune. I'm really relieved that it worked. The photos were captured by the telescope's near-infrared camera, which has three infrared filters that show features of planets that are invisible to the human eye. Neptune doesn't seem blue in the published pictures as it usually does because of this. However, the planet appears greyish-white and has ice clouds striping its surface at the near-infrared wavelengths recorded by Webb's main imager, NearCam. This is due to the presence of methane in its atmosphere. The planet's atmosphere was also seen by the telescope in great detail. Neptune is composed mainly of hydrogen and helium. However, there are several locations where methane clouds at high latitudes may be detected. Because they reflect sunlight, these methane ice clouds show brilliant streaks and patches in Webb's photographs. Despite the clouds' ability to persist for days in Neptune's atmosphere, nobody understands these things. Like cirrus clouds on Earth, they come and go. An object that appears to be a brilliant star glows over Neptune in a zoomed-out image. Actually, it's Triton, Neptune's most giant moon, which is coated in a frozen covering of nitrogen. It is not a star at all. Triton is more prominent than Pluto and looks brighter due to its reflecting ice coating. When seen in a zoomed-out picture, Triton, Neptune's unusual enormous moon encircled by Webb's renowned diffraction spikes, looks like a brilliant spiky star. Due to its ice-covered surface reflecting light, Triton, a planet bigger than Pluto's dwarf planet, shines brighter than Neptune. Neptune, on the other hand, absorbs most of the light landing on it. Triton is thought to have formerly been an object from the neighboring Kuiper belt that got caught in the planet's orbit because of its incorrect orbit around Neptune. According to McCochran, who spent more than 20 years on the Webb project, the telescope takes all the glare and backdrop away so that we can start to pick out the atmospheric makeup of the planet. The Webb telescope discovered near-infrared light beyond the visible spectrum to get these new photographs. According to the AP, the images show weak dust bands and Neptune's narrow rings, which have never previously been seen in the infrared spectrum. Mark McCochran, a senior advisor for research and exploration at the European Space Agency, said, The rings are more reflective in the infrared. They are now much simpler to see. Thanks to the JWST, we are now fully aware that six of the planet's 14 moons, Galatea, Naiad, Thalassa, Despina, Proteus and Larissa, are close to the rings. However, the telescope could record the rings because of the camera's picture quality. Webb will allow astronomers to analyze the reflectance of the rings and further study may provide information about their size and makeup. The ice giant is the only planet that cannot be seen with the naked eye and is located around 30 times farther from the Sun than Earth. The planet orbits the Sun for around 165 years, and since it is so far away, High noon on the planet is similar to dusky twilight on Earth. The pictures also reveal the planet's equator as a narrow, bright line. NASA's claims that a narrow, bright line close to the equator may represent the visual hallmark of global atmospheric circulation that drives Neptune's winds and storms. The planet has winds that may reach over 1,200 miles per hour. 
it may be evidence that the atmosphere of Neptune is rotating, generating its winds and storms. More infrared radiation is emitted by the equatorial warming atmosphere, which Webb detects as a blazing line. Webb's primary research focuses on the early cosmos, where he searches well beyond our solar system for hints of the birth of the first stars and galaxies. But it's also educating us about planets closer to our own. Astronomers have discovered that ice giant planets like Neptune and Uranus are the most prevalent in the Milky Way as they scour the cosmos for new planets like ours. We can better understand our observations of other ice giants by being able to look at them in great detail, McCochran added. The picture also reveals an exciting brightness at the summit of Neptune. Astronomers have yet to obtain a decent look at the planet's North Pole due to its tilt away from Earth and the fact that it takes 164 years to round the Sun. He also stated, It's quite amazing to go and take a look at. The goal is that it will usher in a new age of discovery. The following year, studies based on Webb's views of Neptune and Triton were anticipated. The kind of astronomy we see now was unthinkable five years ago. It is precisely the machine we planned, so of course we knew it would do this. We developed it to do this, he added. But it's really astounding to suddenly begin seeing objects at these longer wavelengths that were previously inaccessible. Because exoplanets are fainter than the stars they orbit, it is challenging to directly view them. Webb made news when it captured a direct view of an exoplanet circling HIP 65426, a star around 385 light-years from Earth. However, that exoplanet is extraordinarily enormous, nearly 12 times the size of Jupiter in the solar system. It also orbits its parent star far away, much further than the solar system's outermost planet, Neptune. JWST collects and transmits raw data from its instruments to very near and mid-infrared sensors and various attachments that may specialize them for coronography, spectroscopy and other activities as required, much like any scientific equipment. In a location known as the Tarantula Nebula, the world's largest and newest space observatory has obtained an incredibly detailed picture of hundreds of newborn stars that had never previously been seen. The telescope has produced the best view yet of the Cartwheel Galaxy, in addition to breathtaking photographs of Jupiter. Webb is designed to study longer wavelength infrared radiation, as opposed to Hubble, which primarily explores light in the visible region of the spectrum. This enables it to collect light from the beginning of the universe that has been stretched out by the expansion of space over the past 13.8 billion years. In a recent image that combines images from the Hubble and Webb telescopes, the European Space Agency showed the center of Messier 74, a star 32 million light-years distant in the constellation of Pisces. The James Webb Space Telescope is proven to be the most advanced observatory yet built for space research. Webb will investigate the origins and structure of the cosmos and the existence of additional planets outside our solar system. Months later, JWST is still sending down reams of data to amazed scientists on Earth, and it's anticipated to revolutionize our knowledge of the cosmos and everything from exoplanets and planetary formation to galaxy structure. There's no denying that JWST is rapidly gaining fans worldwide. However, only some have appreciated the frenzy of activity, which has sometimes reflected a focus on speed above the scientific process. What are your thoughts on the images Webb has sent us so far? Do you agree that it helps you understand space better? Let us know in the comments section and we hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.